Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through time complexity. So in this lecture, I'll be not discussing about asymptotic notations and all those things. We'll be discussing them in our further lectures. Okay. So in this lecture, I'll be just discussing the introduction. So in our previous lecture, we discussed about uh, space complexity, right? So in the similar way, we'll be discussing about time complexity, how we can do, like we students can do on a small algorithms, like how they are running and how much time are they taking. Okay. So we can estimate that. Okay. So basically time complexity is nothing but the time taken by a program or an algorithm to complete its execution. Okay. So we will be considering only the runtime, not the compilation time or total of compilation time and runtime, only runtime. Okay. So the time complexity of an algorithm is the amount of time required by an algorithm to run to completion. So until completion from start to complete is called as time complexity so basically time can be divided into two types those are nothing but compilation time run time so we will be considering only compilation time sorry run time we will not be considering any thoughts about compilation time so because compilation time depends on various factors okay so we consider only run time so the time complexity so basically when whenever you hear the word time okay so it will be measured in milliseconds nanoseconds like that but we will not be using those kind of measurements here we will be using the frequency count. So how frequently a statement is executed. So if it is in a for loop, it will be executed many times. If it is just a definition or an uh, or an initialization or anything, it will be executed once maximum in that way. So the time complexity is given in terms of frequency count because it is not possible to compute time complexity using physical clock. So you cannot use a stopwatch like start. It took 10 seconds. It took 5 seconds. You cannot say like that. That is the reason why you will be using the frequency count instead of physical clock. So frequency count is basically a count denoting number of items of execution of statements. Okay. So I hope it is 100% clear with the definition. Okay. So let us go through a small example. So we'll be discussing about 5 to 6 because the time complexity is most important. Okay. So algorithm sum of a comma n. So here we are doing addition of some terms. I think so. Okay. So let us start it. So we initially we are initializing s equal to zero. So that will be one step and we are doing a for loop for of i equal to one to n. So please listen carefully guys here. This is really important when you are doing time complexity using our own skills. So one to n. Okay, so if you write 1, 2, let us assume I wrote 1, 2, 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I will be saying that this will be executing 5 times only. But that is a bit wrong. So basically this statement will be executed plus 1 times. Like more than this path. So here you are getting 5, right? So here you will be executing one more time. So you might be asking me, so why, why it will be executing more than 1? So initially it started with 1. It will go 2, 3, 4. It will do for phi also because it doesn't know that whether it should consider it or not. So it will be going for sixth also. And if it is the condition is less than or equal to phi, it will check with six and then it will be false. So this condition will also be checked. So I'll be just writing it here. So that will be clear for you. So one less than five, true, two less than five, true, three less than five, true, four less than or equal to five, true, five less than or equal to five, true. So we, as we dis, we think that after this, it will automatically terminate. So we'll be, it will be considering only five times, but a for loop will be exiting when only when it is false. So in the next situation, it will be five. Then it will be false. Then it will terminate of that loop. So it takes one, two, three, four, five, which we assumed as a five plus one more extra iteration for that only particular statement. So it will always be N plus one. So if this follows for N times or this follows for N times, this will be n plus 1. Simple. Okay. So here it will be n plus 1. So I have just written it clearly. So 0 to n and n plus 1. Whereas this statement will not be executed for the last time when the condition fails. So it will be of n 0 to n. And return statement will carry 1. So you just add them. 2n. n plus n is 2n and 1, 2, 3, 3. Okay. Okay. So this is one example. So let us continue with the second example. So here also we are having one more for loop. So basically, whenever someone is asking you in some kind of interview or anywhere also, you will be expecting these kind of questions. So there they will be asking these kind of tricky or funny questions. Okay. 
So basically here for of i equal to 0, i less than n, i equal to i into 2. So basically when we are coding, we will be using i plus plus or i minus minus and these kind of things are used rarely. Okay. Okay. So inside some kind of execution is there. So let us assume this statement or these internal statements take how many times of execution or what is the frequency of them. So if you consider the flow here, so initially i equal to 1. So after that it will be multiplied with 2. So for this again into 2, for this again into 2, for this again into 2. So in this way it is increasing exponentially, right? So it is exponentially it is increasing. So you can write it as 2 power k where k is the i value. So you can write even k 2 power i also to be simple. Okay. I don't know why I wrote here k i. So i. Okay. So in this way. So 2 power k equal to i. So once you apply once you apply logarithms, logarithms on both sides. So it is nothing but i. So log base 2 and 2 will be cancelling. Here you will be getting log n. So i equal to log n. Okay. So I think it's 100% clear here. Okay, so once if this is clear, you can, uh, you can easily understand the next things also. So everything will be depending on these things only. Okay, so here if you assume for of i equal to n i less than or greater than 1. So if you observe here, it is decreasing here. If it is, it is from n. If it is from 32, it will be becoming half like i equal to i by 2 and number of executions. Okay, so I assumed that the value which we started with 16. So it became 8, 4, like this example I am writing, don't worry, 1. Okay, so it is also, it is decreasing exponentially, right? Okay, so based on n, the given input, you will be writing it in this way, n by 2 power k, k is nothing but the i, I has just written k equal to i in this oh, oh, all things. So n by 2 power k, so you will be writing n equal to 2 power k. Okay, so you, you got the same equation, even it is dividing into half, but the operation is exponentially, but in reciprocal, that's it. So n equal to 2 power k and k equal to log n. So this also flows for log n times. Okay. So whenever these kind of questions come, don't be confused. You can just convert this into normal form. i equal to 1 to i less than or equal to n to i equal to i into 2. So this and this is absolutely same when you compare with the time complexity or time measurement. Okay. So both take same time. Whereas this is dividing from maximum to minimum. And this is minimum to maximum. It is moving from minimum to maximum. Okay. So I hope it is clear now. So let us continue with one more thing. So this is, uh, this seems to be easy, but it's a bit confusing when you try to do it. So for of i equal to 0, i into i less than n. So here you are doing some kind of square operation. i square. Right. So plus i plus plus. So here also he is asking for number of executions. So initially assume i equal to 1, 2, 4, 16. So it is just doubling. So based on n, so if n is 32, sorry, assume that n is 20. So if n is less than, so till here it will be going for 20 values. So if you identify here, so this is nothing but squares, right? So here you are having i square. So you can directly write i square equal to n. So i equal to under root n. Okay. So here it takes root n times of execution. So even by observing, you can say, I told here input is 20. Okay, so the n is 20. So it will be starting from 1, 2, 4, 16. So after that it cannot continue because if it continues it will be 4, 5, so 25. It will be go till 25 at 5, right? So that is the reason it will execute only for 4 times. So that is nothing but under root of 20 is nothing but 4 point something, right? Okay. So similarly this is a bit interesting question when compared with the previous ones. Okay. So here an algorithm is given p equal to 0. For of i equal to 1, i less than n, i equal to i into 2, p plus plus. So it is doing just a small operation. So I hope everyone remembers this. Like what will be the time complexity for that? It is nothing but log n. It's simple, right? Okay. So similarly, we are having a, another for loop, which is a j equal to 1, j less than p, j equal to i into 2. So it is doing the same operation, but till p. Whereas p is defined here and that depends on n. So here we wrote p is equals to log n. Here you will be writing the time complexity of the whole thing or this thing will be equal to log p. So whereas p is already defined which is log n. So you can write log of log n. Like every time you will be writing in terms of the input. Like input size is n. So this will be the output for this. Like the time complexity for that. 
so i hope everyone got a clear idea so there are, there are few things that i have just missed in the examples okay so assume that there is a for loop inside which there is another for loop okay so this is going from 1 to n just for small example 1 to n so in this situation the time complexity of this will be n square that is nothing but the inner into outer n into n whereas if the if those are separate and those are the and those are independent to each other so this is a for loop this is a for loop they, those are independent to each other then the maximum of it so if you assume this is taking log n times log n of time this is taking n time so this n time will be considered as the time complexity of that so we'll be analyzing this also don't worry you'll be understanding a clear you'll be getting a clear idea in the later on but i'm just giving you an introduction if you're trying to solve those kind of problems okay okay so i hope everyone got a clear idea so in the next lecture we'll be going through the different cases of analysis like what is the best case what is worst case and what is average case so let us meet in the next tutorial thank you thanks for watching